welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to start a process on making a liquid soap, making shampoo. I think we're going to break this into two days because it's a bit of a process and sometimes it's better not to rush things. And just to let you know, I'm actually referring to this book, Making Natural Liquid Soaps by Katherine Baylor, and I'll include a link to this in the description of the video. To get started, let's talk about the supplies we need before we even start. This is a double boiler. It's stainless steel. You cannot use aluminum. This is a really nice scale. It's um, one that you can adjust. So I can put any container on here to measure and I can adjust the weight of the scale to zero. This is a stick blender. You could use other things, but according to the book, this is the fastest way. And anytime you're doing something like this, you kind of want to do it the best way you can because other words it can really drag on. This is a candy thermometer. Okay, this is really important. When you do the lye part, when you add the lye to the water, you're going to want to wear safety goggles and gloves. That will also be really critical for the part when we're messing with the lye. There's two kinds of lye. The type of lye that we're going to be using to make a liquid soap is called potassium hydroxide. We're going to need 13 ounces of potassium hydroxide. And if you read this book, there's a lot of different oils or fats that you can use for shampoo making. But I picked the one that I thought would be easiest for me to work with since it's my very first time doing this process. Never go for the hardest method possible. And I did infuse rosemary and lavender into my oils because I know that rosemary and lavender are both really great for hair. So what I have here is some castor oil. And I have some coconut oil. The other thing we're going to need is distilled water, boric acid, potassium carbonate, which is also known as um, potash. And I don't even know how to say this. This is something that we'll be using to test the acidity of the soap in the process. Uh, P-H-E-N-O-L-P-T-H-A-L-E-I-N solution. Phenolphthalein, I'm guessing. And last but not least, a large glass jar. And it needs to have two holes, a larger hole and a smaller hole. And I think I forgot to mention my purpose for doing this. I've read a lot in the news lately about how so many of the chemicals in our personal care products are actually harmful for us. And so I am on a mission to create as many personal care products as possible that I use for myself. And so this is a big one. We're going to make shampoo. One thing that the author stresses as being extremely important is making sure your measurements are accurate. Usually if something goes wrong in this process, it's because your measurements weren't precise. So that's why we have our scale. The first thing we're going to measure today are our oils. So we're going to need 11 ounces of castor oil, and we're going to need 35 ounces of coconut oil, and 3 ounces of tallow. And you're supposed to start with the hard, solid fats and melt those and add in the more liquid fats. So the first thing we're going to be doing is our coconut oil. One nice thing about it being solid is it'll be easier to weigh it, only because it's quite a bit more coconut oil than probably my dish would normally take. Because it's solid, it'll be easy to pile it up on the scale here. So let's turn around to our work area. And this isn't too horrible to get out. Actually, let me make sure that's centered on zero here. Yes, it is. So coconut oil is a lot more lathering than many of the other oils, but it's also drying. So it's nice from a lathering perspective, but you don't want to do all coconut oil unless you want a really drying shampoo. I know castor oil is fabulous for your hair. But 
but it's really important to read about the types of oils that you're going to use because different oils require different lye solutions. 32 ounces of coconut oil. Now before we put our oil in our double boiler, let's go ahead and add four cups of water in here. And this can just be tap water. This won't be going into our soap. It's just to gently heat our oils and our soap solution when we get it to that point. Let's go ahead and turn this on medium heat. And let's add our coconut oil into our double boiler. And let's re-zero our scale to zero. And next we're going to want to have our three ounces of tallow. And this is tallow that I've filtered myself, but you can buy tallow. Just a little more. Perfect. All right, our coconut oil is melted. Let's go ahead and add in our tallow. And let's do a little temperature check here just to see how we're doing for temperature. Let's go ahead and measure our castor oil. We are going to need 11 ounces of castor oil. Let's make sure our scale is zeroed. So my camera froze and I lost a very short part of the video. Basically, we just added 11 ounces of castor oil into our double boiler. And we turned our double boiler down. So we have this right about 170. This is the right temperature. So to this point, we've added our coconut oil, we've added our tallow, and we've added our castor oil. The next step is we're going to go outside and we're going to mix our lye into our water, and then also our potassium carbonate. Outside now for this lye process, and I'm about to put this mask on. This is the hazardous part. And I'm putting my gloves on. Take a look and see. Yep, I got my mask on. If you do this, you should too. We're going to need 13 ounces of potassium hydroxide, and I'm actually going to measure it into a cup so I don't get this on my scale because I also use this for food. So let's zero our scale. There we go. And open our container. There we go, we got 13 ounces. So let's set this aside because we are going to put our water in our jar first. That's very important. And I'm going to use this to measure the water. So let's zero our scale. And we're using distilled water. Very important. And we need 39 ounces of distilled water. And I am totally fogging up. It's okay, I can see just enough to do this. Did lose just a little bit of water on the table. All 
right, next, we are going to add our lye to our jar. And we're going to be very careful. We don't want to breathe any steam that comes off of this. So if it gets steamy, I will walk out of the camera space. I'm really surprised because this should be getting steamy, I would think. So let's stir it and see what happens. It should get hot. I actually have it on a pile that I could put a hot pan on. I just didn't feel any heat. I feel some heat. It's not super hot, but I do feel some heat. Now we're going to want to add 2.5 ounces of potassium carbonate. So I am standing away from the direction the breeze is going. Let's go ahead and measure our 2.5 ounces of potassium carbonate. Now let's try to get all this in our jar. All right, that looks to be very well mixed. I'm not seeing any steam at this time. The temperature. Pretty warm, but it's not like super hot. I'm going to go ahead and put our lid on this and we can let this just sit for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to be keeping this goggles on just a little bit longer. I have the screen open for ventilation outside and I turn my vent on. We're probably past the point of any danger as far as the steam and whatnot goes, but always good to be cautious. Putting my gloves back on. And we are going to slowly add our lye solution into our pot. Now, I did turn the heat off on that because it's a little warmer than I wanted. It's about 170. Make sure we have this on really tight. And it looks like we're going to want to pour this in while we use our stick blender. I'm going to have to pour a little bit of it and then do the stick blender. Yeah, I'm going to have to pour it in and then do the stick blender. I can't hold this and do the blender at the same time. In fact, we might just need to loosen our lid a little bit to get the rest of this out. We are wearing rubber gloves. Now let's start our stick blender. So my first challenge I'm encountering here is it got a little bit more puffy than I expected. We do have some thickness forming here at the bottom. So I switched to blending it manually. 
And at the bottom, it does feel like it's kind of getting a little more like taffy. So we want to keep stirring this so it's combined. I did turn my heat off. You're supposed to keep it about 160 to 170, but I didn't know if the heat may have been causing it to be this puffy. We do have thickening. I would say I've been doing this now for about, well, initially I did the stick blender, but in total I've been doing this for about seven minutes. Might be able to return to our stick blender, but I did not want this bowling over for sure. And there aren't any fumes on this at this point. I did take off my mask. I'm still wearing my gloves. That seems like a good idea. We haven't added our boric acid in yet to neutralize. But we want to keep moving this until all of it is like taffy. I'm going to tell you this is a workout. I thought making bread the old-fashioned way was a workout. Well, this is a workout. So make sure your arms are refreshed when you start this process. But I'm glad the puffiness has gone down because I briefly thought this was going to go over. But what I did is I switched to manually stirring and I turned the heat off. It's still actually quite hot. Not so hot that it's going to burn me with my gloves on, but it's hot, which we want it to be hot. We have a mixture of a taffy-like substance and foam. I'm hoping to incorporate all this foam into the taffy substance. It's looking like I see a lot more of the taffy-like substance, so I think we're making some success here. Let's just keep it up. It's pretty hot, so I did turn my heat off when it started getting really foamy because I was worried it was going to go over the top, and we would not want that. That would make for one big mess. I think we're, we're almost at the point where we can say our first stage of making paste was successful. What we're gonna be doing at this point is once I've satisfied that I've mixed it enough, is we're gonna put some towels over it and let it just sit overnight. And we'll pick back up in, in the morning with the next step of our process. Today we have definitely reached paste. Let me see if I can bring the computer over here to show you what that looks like since I don't have a sophisticated means of doing multiple videos yet. Could happen in the future. My gloves are definitely a sticky mess. That's what it looks like. <laughs>